Do you know what would be funny? Hitting a key and then deleting the base plate. That'd be pretty funny, I think. So I'm going to teach you about keybinds. Okay, keybinds are huge. Okay, keybinds are insanely important. Like you, you press W and then you start walking forward, right? How does the game do that? Well, it detects when you press W, right? And then when you press W, it changes like your character position. Now, now Roblox does this for you, right? So this is like a built-in thing. So where you can move around. So Roblox already has code for this, right? But what if you want to add your own stuff? What do we do is we go to starter player and starter player script, and then we make a new local script, which I'll, I'll call, you don't have to do this. I'll just call it keybind script, right? Um, and I, the reason we place it inside starter player script is because anything in here, whenever a player joins, like whatever script we have here gets put inside of the player, right? And because it's a local script, local scripts will only work if the player actually has them, right? Because, because like the, the local script needs to know like, like what player it's at, right? Because then we could say like game.player.local player, right? So the script, the, a local script will only run if it's inside a player, right? So just remember that. So yeah. Um, so the first thing we need to do, the way we actually utilize keybinds is we need to get access to the user input service. And the way we do this is very easy. So we, you, you don't have to make a variable, but I'll just do it for convenience. So I don't have to keep retyping it. UIS, so stands for user input service, is equal to game colon get service, user input service. So now we have access to the user input service, right? That's, that, that, that's dope, radical, radical, okay? If I do user input service, right? And then we see what it has, right? So let's see, what are some events? Um, so yeah, events are basically like whenever something happens, right? It lets us know. So for example, input began, right? So whenever any input begins, no matter what key, just anything, this is going to fire. When an input ends, no matter what, it's going to fire, right? Um, or touch, for example. So touch is like on a mobile device, right? So when a touch ends, right, then it fires. When a touch pans around, you know, drags one finger, then it fires. When someone taps, then it fires, right? When a touch is moved, then it fires. When you pinch, then it fires. When you swipe, then it fires. Um, jump request. So this fires whenever, like, like you know, the, the player jumps basically um, whenever you rotate whenever the input uh, you know changes right which I don't even know what that fully does uh, touch began right so when you actually begin the touch uh, point or action so when the user performs like a point or action so like a wheel a pinch or a pen uh, window focus so this this fires when the window of the Roblox client gains focus on the window screen so like <laughs> When, when the, so if the, if the window, so like, yeah, as you can see here, it's AFK, right? So like it, you can detect whether the player closes the window. Text box, touch long press, touch tap in world. What is this, bro? Okay. There's, there's a lot of stuff, right? Um, and then as for events, I'm actually not sure if there is any, is key down. Okay. So this returns whether like a given key is currently held down. So if you, if you want to know whether like a player is holding down a specific key, that's what you would use, right? Uh, you could get you could get the mouse like position, you could you could guess get the the keys that are currently being pressed down, uh, gamepad stake. I don't I don't know too much about gamepads, right? Um, gets device gravity, which describes the device's gravity vector, and device as in like, like your device, like your phone. Last input. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here you could just play around with. There's actually there's actually a lot of stuff. But again, what we want to focus on is keybind, right? And we want to probably detect when an input is began. So we'll just do dot input begin. And then we can connect that so that it fires a function whenever an input does begin. And this gives us two things. It gives us an, it gives us an input, which is an input object. And it gives us what it calls a game processed event, which is a Boolean. And a Boolean is true or false, right? So it's going to give us the input, which I'll just call imp. And it's going to give us the processed event, which I'll just call proc. So in short, the input is going to be like, you know, the, the key that's being pressed um, or, or not even the key, maybe like, or, or the gamepad, right? Or the, um, like, like the mobile device, right? And what proc does is basically like, um, if the player, let's say clicks the, their mouse, right? But if they're clicking on like a button, like, a, like you made it, maybe you have a button in your game. And if the player clicks a button, then this is going to be equal to true. If the player is hitting like, you know, le like letters on their keyboard, but they're hitting it because they're like typing in chat, then proc is true. In short, 
if the player is doing something else, so if they're likely, you know, chatting or pressing a button, we, we probably don't want, like, for example, if we have a thing where, like, whenever the player presses W, they begin flying, right? Like, when the player's chatting, we don't want it to, so that, like, at, when they're chatting, when they say, like, what, for example, we don't want that to activate their ability, right? So we want it to only activate when the player is actually playing the game and not, like, doing something else like chatting or pressing buttons. So what we do is we can just say if proc, then return end. So return just completely ends the function. So it's going to end whenever an input begins, right? So if process, if player is doing something else, then we just return. We just don't do the function. But then if if not proc, if the player is actually in the game and, you know, they, they just press the key normally, that's when we can check what type of input it actually is. So we can say if imp, um, and this is where usually you would say like dot user input type or dot key code. Um, let me see, is there anything else? Um, and then you could change the, you could, yeah, so th there, there are um, three main things, right? So let, let me let me just check this real quick. I actually don't know what a user input state is. Oh, I see, okay. So the three things are, we have input, uh, user input type, which usually is the most used one, and it describes the kind of input being performed, right? Whether on the mouse, on the keyboard, gamepad, touch, whatever. Um, so then we could ask if input dot user input type is equal to enum, which enum is like, it, it's just, it just holds values. So if you want a value, if you want, if you need to access like values that are user input types, you would do like enum dot, and then dot user input type and then dot this, right? So this lets you actually detect what is, so maybe if, so if you want to detect whenever the player presses the, their, their mouse button one, then, you know, you do mouse button one. If it's a tap, then it's this. If it's mouse button two, then it's this. If it's a gyroscope of a mobile device, none, which is just unknown. I don't, that's, I don't, okay. Focus, the client regaining focus of the Roblox window. So like, you know, if you, if the player like presses on the window, then that can, that, that's considered an input. You have all the game pads, um, keyboard. So just if it's any keyboard, um, if it's text inside a text box, mouse wheel. Um, I don't even know what this is. I'll be honest. Mouse wheel three, accelerometer, mouse movement, whenever the mouse moves. Okay, whatever, right? The other thing we have is a key code. So enum.key code. And this is just the stuff on your keyboard, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So you can have stuff like, um, you know, end key, one key, pause key, three key, the C key, I key, you know, stuff like that. So you can have F, up. Um, you, you can do shifts as well. So not like this, but yes, yeah, so like right, left shift, right shift. You can do alt. So like left alt, right alt, uh, control, I think command also. Oh no, comma, control, left control, right control. And, and, and by the way, this assumes that you're on like Windows, right? So if you're on Mac, so I'm on Mac. So for example, something like left control. Um, so like MacBooks don't have a control key. I mean, they do, but it, it's like different. So for Macs, a control key is a command key, right? And so I don't think there's a command key. Here. Yeah, there isn't yet. So yeah, this is this is meant for like Windows based stuff, right? Not, not for like MacBooks and everything. And then the third type, which I've actually never used myself, is a user input state, which let me actually see, because this is new to me as well, right? User input state. Um, yeah, yeah. So this basically just seems like, you know, like um, if, if the input just ended, if the input was canceled, if the input uh, should never be seen in a game, if the input was just began, um, or if the input has changed. So like, a, so, 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 like, so like a movement of the mouse or whatever, right? So it seems like, yeah, so yeah, basically. But again, what we want to do here is we just want to detect when the player presses some key. So we're going to do key code, right? We're going to say if key code is equal to enum key code, um, let's say R, okay, why not? Then, so then if the player presses R, then we could workspace dot base plate history which because we're doing this on the client it's not going to destroy it like on the server so you know it's not going to actually like be destroyed technically but if i press r right now there we go yeah look at that and it actually yeah because my client believes that there's no base plate it lets me jump off of it yeah, see, even though technically there is a base plate on the server, because my, like my player believes that there's no base plate, he can jump off it. Yeah, base plate. Okay, yeah. And so the more the more I the more I click R, 
the more it does this. So that is pretty cool. Or something I could do is I could say workspace.base plate, like dot transparency, minus equals 0 0.05. So I could just, oh wait, no, it's plus equals, right? Yeah, so I could just keep increasing the transparency value. And when you increase the transparency, it like makes it more invisible, which is kind of weird, right? Like you, you, you'd think that increasing the transparency would make it, maybe it's just me, I don't know. It, it is kind of weird, right? But yeah, so now whenever I click the R key, it's gonna get a little bit more invisible. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Bum, bum, bum. And the more I click, there we go. So it's not fully invisible because this there's still like an image on it, right? So if I wanted to make it fully invisible, I would delete this texture. And now it's fully invisible. So now I can keep pressing R. And yeah, if I keep pressing R, let's see, look at the base plate, right? See, so yeah, I keep pressing R and it just keeps adding the transparency, which now obviously does nothing. Because when, once you go past one, it just ends. But yeah, look at that. How cool is that? Boom. Just like that. Yeah, so that's basically um, it, I, I guess, with inputs. You know, you input process, input began, if process, then turn end. And then you can have this, right? There's also cool functions you could do, like you, user input dot, um, it's like held, I think. What was it? Like key is, or like, is key down, yeah. So this, 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 like, it, like this actually tells us like what keys down. So we say, okay, if key down enum user input type, or no, wait, key code, right? Yeah, we need the key code. So basically you like you can fire this function and you're like, okay, if Q is down, then this is gonna return true. Or if Q is not down, it's gonna return false. So there's actually a lot of cool stuff you could do with this. Um, and again, yeah, you know, if you, if you wanna make changes on the server, you'd have to use remote events, which I have a video on them. Haha, <laughs> I'm not trying to get more views, I'm just, this video is probably long enough as is. Yeah, that's basically all, all, all there is to know for, you know, keybinds, clicks, game, pa game passes, game presses, game pads, I don't know, uh, taps, joysticks, whatever, I don't know. Um, yeah, so hopefully you found, you found it helpful, and yeah, thank you for watching.